What's going on guys? Welcome back to HVAC Tool Review. Today we are talking about multimeters for use in the HVAC field. Multimeters are probably one of the most used tools in the trade. You're gonna be using a meter every single day. There's a lot of meters out on the market. Today we're gonna to be talking about the best HVAC meters under 400 bucks. Something to keep in mind when you're looking for a meter is make sure that it's rated for the type of work that you're gonna be doing. Think of the worst case scenario. If you're not familiar with the CAT ratings, Check out the blog post. It goes a little bit more in depth talking about the different category ratings for meters and where they're used and what locations. One of the big reasons meters need to be rated for the category that they're gonna be used in is because of voltage spikes and transient voltages that you can be exposed to while working on. A lot of this stuff is, is widely variable and uncontrollable, so it's better to be protected when you're gonna be direct contact with voltages like that. And the reasoning for that is because when you're working in a cat four environment, that's usually from utility power coming into the building, all of those conductors and everything there is meant to be able to transport significantly higher voltage and carrying a lot of energy and current meant to carry that stuff. So if you're gonna be out there working on it, uh, your meter needs to be rated to work on voltage that high. And usually the CAT rating provides a much higher protection for those transient voltages that you can be exposed to. If you're unfamiliar with the CAT ratings, check out the blog post. I go a little bit more in depth there. I've got some charts show the CAT ratings. Uh, the It's got a little pictorial that kind of explains it a little more in detail. Make sure what you're working on, your, your tooling is rated for it. These, these injuries are significant that you can suffer from an arc blast or an arc flash. Big thing is making sure your meter, not only your meter, but also make sure your, your meter leads are rated for that as well. So the first meter we're gonna be looking at today is the Amprobe AM530. So I've had this one for a little while, uh, I've been using it. Um, mostly stays at home for just stuff around the house. I don't have to go grab my meters off my truck. This is not a bad meter to have if you're gonna be just starting out or you're trying to save some money. They've got models lower than this one as well. So this is the 530. I think you can go all the way down to the 510. The 510 is a bare bones meter. Uh, it's still a cat three, 600 volt meter. I don't think it has the flashlight that this one has and then it definitely does not have the thermometer. Uh, the 510 is an absolute bare bones meter. I believe it is still a cat three, 600 volt meter. This one is, you can see that here stamped on the meter. Not sure if you can read that there. Down in the lower right hand corner, you can see there that it says CAT3 600 volts. The 510 also does not have the temperature. You cannot use it as a thermometer, thermocouple, um, whereas the 530 and I think the 520 HVAC series you can. The biggest difference between the 510 and the 530 is that this is an actual true RMS meter, whereas the 510 and the 520s I don't think are. So for me, it's important to have a true RMS meter. If you ever tried to read the output on a drive with a with a meter that's not a true RMS reader, you're gonna get very erratic readings. Like you can't check those sine waves that are chopped up like that, like a true RMS can. So RMS stands for root mean square. So every meter that I'm gonna use in the field is always gonna be a true RMS. Um, you can read more about that. I'll throw a link down in the description and get some more information. Overall, this has been a been a pretty good meter. Some of the features I really don't look, like about it is it's got this non-contact voltage. Um, I found that's really not accurate and I don't think any professional would be using that in the field. It's kind of more of a homeowner novelty type thing. It'll read out a voltage, but I've never had it be accurate compared to meter leads. It has a flashlight. Kind of comes in handy if you if you need to see something but most of us are carrying a flashlight anyway so it's kind of it's kind of just a feature that's there doesn't do any harm so it's got all of the tooling that you'd need to get out there in the field voltage both ac dc up to 10 amps check capacitance microamps milliamps overall this has been a good meter biggest downfalls that i see with it one the non-contact voltage it's not really a con just don't try and use that for any kind of troubleshooting or precision work, it's just not accurate enough for that. And next is the temperature. You'll see in the end of the video when I'm comparing all these different meters and their thermocouples, this one seems to be a few degrees off pretty much all the time. Every once in a while it's it's close, but if you're trying to do any precision work as far as troubleshooting, superheat, subcooling, I don't think I'd rely on this meter to do it all. I would rather have a dedicated thermometer for that. Last is, I've had some issues with dual input thermometer that I've had before from Amprobe. Didn't last long, it didn't last even a full year. And I think a lot of that to do with is their build quality. As you can see on this one, it's got this red rubber protection around the meter. But if you look at the seams, it's not totally enclosed off. There's, you're able to get moisture and stuff in there. So as you probably know, working in this trade, you're exposed to a lot of the elements 
up on rooftops all the time. If you're able to keep this thing out of the rain um, and take good care of it, this thing will probably last you and do you well, but um, if you're gonna be exposing it to anything harsh, I don't have a lot of faith in this thing being able to take the abuse and last a long time. Next is the Fluke 325. I actually didn't have a 325 on me. I've got this old, old 902 before the Connect. They're pretty similar meters. The 325 is a solid meter. I think it comes in less than 100 bucks. It's AC DC voltage rated up to 600 volts. Um, you're able to take AC current readings up to 400 volts with this clamp meter here. It's got its temperature there. Measurements from 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 752 degrees. So plenty of range there, unless you're doing some ultra low temp work. Resistance up to 40 kilo ohms and capacitance up to 1,000 microfarads. It's a good solid meter for any tech to be tossing in their bag. It's a nice lightweight one. It is a bet added benefit to be able to have a clamp meter versus something like the Amprobe that we were just looking at a minute ago. Um, one thing to keep in mind, it's a Cat 3 600 volt meter. So make sure you're using that in the right places accordingly. We'll be doing the, the temperature readings for all of them at the end of the video. Next on the list is the Fluke 902 FC. This is one that I use almost every single day. So as you can see there, it is an AC DC meter. It'll do temperatures in Fahrenheit and Celsius, minimum maximum features. Um, it's got its backlight there. This one will actually connect to the Fluke app with the Fluke Connect. You're able to stay out of harm's way by, by using this wirelessly back to your phone, safe distance away to get your readings um, that are displayed in real time right onto your device, whether it's a iPad or a phone. You're able to do voltage, both AC and DC. As you can see there, uh, you're able to do resistance, resistance, continuity, microamps, temperature, capacitance, and then you've got that clamp amp drop. So this has been a great meter. I've been using this same one for probably about maybe four years now. I've never had any issues. This one is also a true RMS meter. One thing to keep in mind is I've seen a few links that show the 902 FC as being a Cat 3000 volt, Cat 4 600 volt, but you can always check. It should be physically stamped on your meter. So I'm not sure if that shows up there, but this is actually a cat 3 600 volt cat 4 300 volt if there's ever any question make sure that you're going off of what's actually stamped on the meter that you're using you want to make sure the meters that you're using are rated by some independent third-party testing facility such as ul etc there's a lot of a lot of manufacturers out there that are claiming their meters are higher rated than they actually are so if there's nothing to back up that claim make sure that you're going with a reputable third-party independently tested meter. Next on the list, we have got the Fluke 116 True RMS. This one's nice, it's got a little stand, it sets you up like that. Um, it's also got the Fluke, I don't remember what they call it, for the hanging magnet for ease of use, easy access, um, hang it up on a unit, use the, use the meter leads or the temp probes, however you need. So this is another one, it's got the auto voltage. I don't know if I would really recommend using that feature on this meter. I've used it before and it's and I've I've got mixed results, so I typically steer away from using that feature of this meter. I prefer and recommend that people and just select the correct voltage that you're going to be trying to take readings on uh, just to avoid any issues. AC voltage there, DC voltage there, millivolts let me turn that backlight on. Resistance in ohms, continuity testing, capacitance, temperature, and microamps. One added benefit of this meter over like the 902 is it's much more sensitive. Uh, it's rated down to half a percent accuracy. Uh, this is another Cat 3 600 volt rated meter. This is another one. So you can see like what I was talking about with the amp probe earlier is that it's got the rubber over molded protection like this one does. This one com actually comes off to get to it and is around your meter. There's no there's no open seam that allows any moisture or anything to get into your meter. So I prefer that, especially in this field when you're up working on units in the rain. This to me feels like a much more robust, durable unit versus the Ampro. This is my go-to meter. I usually carry this and the 902 FC, and those have been my go-to for the for the past few years. Got min-max ratings, hold features all that good stuff that you'd expect. Uh, one nice thing is on this meter, you've only 
you've got the two inputs to worry about putting your meter leads in and it's able to do everything from there uh, versus like the Ampro, you've, you've got to move those over um, and make sure you're not leaving them in the wrong spot when you are taking a voltage reading with the potential to blow up your meter. You always want to make sure your meter is fused, protected like these all are um, and make sure you always use a manufacturer recommended fuse for replacement if something was to happen there. Uh, and the last one that we're going to be talking about today is the Fluke 376 FC. You can pick these up for less than 400 bucks and if you're working on some some large equipment or that you need the cat rating for this is the one that I would I would recommend. You can pick it up as a kit that includes leads, the wireless clamp flex connect um, which if you've never used one of those those come in really handy on some really tight bundles. It's able to weave in and out especially on some of that larger gauge wire allows you to get some get some readings that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get with your with just a hard plastic clamp meter. Another added benefit of using that flex connector is that it allows you to take amp readings up to 2500 amps. If you're working on some extremely large equipment where you need to get readings on stuff that's high, uh, this meter also has the FC connectability uh, which allows you to take those readings from a safe distance away. This meter is also a Cat3 1000 volt or a Cat4 600 volt rated meter. If you're gonna be doing work in, in a category four area where you're gonna be exposed up to 600 volts, a good option for you versus the other options that we discussed earlier. The downside of using the 376 is that it does not do any temperature, but if you're working in areas that you require that extra protection of the Cat4, the Cat3 scenario, 1000 volts, taking amp readings that high, it's well worth it to go ahead and pick that meter up and then just pick up an additional dual input such as the Fluke 52 for your temperature readings. All right, so now that we've talked about the features of all of the different meters, we're gonna go ahead and grab some ice water and some thermal couples and we'll do some testing on the temperature ranges of all of them. It's been in there about five minutes now and it's, it's holding on the 116 at 32.4 and this is the included temp probe from the amp probe meter. All right, now we've got the Fluke 902 FC you can see we're hanging out at 31.8 with the same uh, thermocouple. All right, here we've got the Fluke 902. This one's hanging out right about 32.5, 32.6, about a degree off from the other two flukes we've tested so far. All right, here we've got the Amprobe AM530. As you can see, this one's reading a little bit further off than the flukes that are all reading right around 32 degrees. Um, not a huge, huge difference, but I mean, a couple degrees is a pretty good amount on, on any meter that you're trying to take accurate superheat and subcool reading. So that's something to keep in mind. And this is the included Amprobe thermal couple that came with this meter. I'll run a test with the flukes as well. Reading. All right, we've got the same thermal couple plugged into the 902 FC. And as you can see there, it's reading pretty, pretty dang close to what the other flukes are reading as well. We'll check it in the amp probe one more time just to see what we're getting there. All right, I've got it in the amp probe here. As soon as I plugged it in, it was reading about 37. It's been about a minute now, and it slowly is creeping down, so we'll see where this ends up once it stabilizes out. You can see that it seems to be hovering right around there at 34.6, 34.7, which is a couple degrees off, which uh, if you're using this for accurate superheat subcool readings, doing some refrigeration work, uh, this, can, this can skew your numbers a little bit. I mean, two degrees isn't a huge deal, depending on what you're working on. But I mean, two degrees is two degrees. All right, guys, well, this concludes this video. Hopefully some of that information there was helpful for you. Um, hopefully that'll make your decision making a little bit easier and maybe gain some knowledge on, on the safety features of the different meters out there. Like always, if there's something in particular you'd like to see reviewed, drop it down in the comments, find me on Instagram. If you wanna learn a little bit more in depth about the cat ratings like we talked about earlier, there's a link down to the blog post that this will be attached to down below. Um, I'll also link out to some some other articles with that go a little bit more in depth on true RMS and all that good stuff. So anyways, thanks for checking it out. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see in the future. Um, and there's links for everything down in the description.